Hey everyone. Okay. So, uh, auditory processing disorder. If you haven't noticed, we're talking lots about auditory processing disorder in the next little bit. Um, it's a huge, huge part of learning and behavior issues. Um, sorry, I'm trying to make this go away. Okay. It's a huge part of learning and behavior issues. So whether it's reading difficulties related to poor phonemic awareness and what is traditionally known as dyslexia, whether it's ADHD, sensory processing disorder, ASD, and so many things in between, it can really, really cause breakdown with all of those factors. And it can be really discouraging for parents because often they go for an assessment like a psycho ed evaluation and they find out their child has auditory processing disorder and they feel super discouraged. Um, that's kind of what comes out in the psycho ed evaluation as if this is a fixed permanent challenge and that there's not much they can do to help their child except manage it with certain, you know, little things you can do in terms of strategies and IEP accommodations and sometimes even medication, all this, you know, to tune out um, auditory overwhelm and all of that type of stuff. But there's so much more to this that I definitely won't be able to totally encompass in today's um, live, but I will be talking about this as we go through and I will have a free training all about causes and root cause solutions on the February 23rd. Link will be in the comments below. So if let me know in the comments whether you're watching the live or the replay, does your child have a hard time processing instructions, remembering multi-step instructions, difficulty paying attention, remembering info, whether it's for a test, whether it's you've told them, you know, to do X, Y, and Z when they get home from school. Do they have a hard time filtering background noise? Do they get overwhelmed in noisy environments? So, you know, let me know, do, does your child, if you feel comfortable, does your child have an official diagnosis of auditory processing disorder? And if they have a diagnosis of other things like ADHD, um, ASD, dyslexia, other types of reading disorders like reading comprehension disorder, um, even sensory processing disorder. A lot of the time auditory processing plays a significant role with this. In fact, in 50% of children diagnosed with ADHD, auditory processing is a huge factor and it accounts for about 30% and I would honestly argue more among kids with learning difficulties. So it is absolutely huge. And the reason for that is that there, when there's auditory processing disorder, there is a disconnect with what the ears hear and the brain processes. So this is not the same as a hearing difficulty. It's not something that can just be um, you know, you can't just find out if your child has auditory processing disorder based on a hearing test. And I'm even going to go as far as to say, finding out that your child gets, sometimes I talk to parents who are like, oh, so I need a diagnosis of auditory processing disorder. And you can totally do that if you have, you know, the financial means for that and so forth. But also keep in mind that that diagnosis is probably not going to give you what you're hoping for in terms of root cause solutions and so forth, which is what we're going to be diving into in the next few weeks, as well as the training on the 23rd of February. So ultimately what happens with auditory processing disorder is there is a breakdown with receiving, processing, interpreting, and retaining information. And so this has to do with even communicating auditory information. So one thing that is really interesting is it's not only right how that your child's receiving it's the output and so i work with a lot of kids and whenever i was early on into this um there was a child I, I, one particular example stands out there was a child i was working with the parents were coming to see me because he had se pretty severe dysgraphia really bright kid not very talkative very quiet uh, a boy of very few words he was 13 amazing pretty well-behaved kid I, the parents didn't complain much about uh, behavior issues but what was interesting is as we worked on the biochemical aspects such as nutrition the gut healing and then the brain training piece in terms of these neurodevelopmental exercises and brain training technologies and so on and so forth his auditory processing significantly improved but what was interesting is all of a sudden i think it was like the five month meeting the parents said 
we can't believe how much he's talking now. We always thought he was just a quiet kid, that that was just his personality, that he was a kid a few words. It wasn't like so few words that you would, uh, you know, think he's nonverbal, but just kind of a mumbler. And they thought, you know, they had two girls who were pretty chatty and they just figured he's a boy. And they said, ever since we've started doing the brain training and the technology and all the other stuff, he just, he comes home from school and he tells us about what happened at school. And there's just so much interesting stuff that he wants to share now that we always just assumed he was a boy a few words. And clearly this was expressive language disorder that went undiagnosed, even though he had, you know, a few other diagnoses. So I just wanted to share that because auditory processing is not just focusing and paying attention and following instructions and being able to read. It's also how we can express ourselves and communicate and so forth, which is why it's a huge part of autism as well. So auditory processing is the difference with hearing a story, right? So sometimes these kids will either it's something went down in the schoolyard and they come home and tell you what happened. And then maybe another sibling's like, that's not what happened or it's their reinterpretation or their interpretation, I should say, of a movie or book they've read and so forth. It has to do with how they interpret sounds when they're reading, if they're able to sound out that whole piece connected to phonemic awareness, the filtering, the noise, remembering. So, and as I mentioned, acquiring language, expressing themselves, the ability to learn is hugely impacted by how well developed your child's auditory processing system is. So ultimately, auditory processing is the difference between hearing and listening. So hearing is a very passive thing. We don't have to do anything to hear. But when we're listening, it's active. It requires engagement, focus, and all of these systems in the ear as well as the brain to be well-developed and to be working optimally. So hearing information doesn't equal processing the information. So basically, I'm gonna keep it really simple, but the way it works is that sound travels through the ear and then the information is processed um, or you know, basically goes into the brain via the nervous system and the way to think of it as is that the ear is like the portal to the brain. It acts as like the processing plant, okay? And so then the auditory nerve then takes those sound waves and converts it into electrical waves, which then provides stimulation to the cortex, our higher brain levels, where executive functioning occurs. So let me know if you have a child with executive functioning issues. Executive functioning are those things like planning, organizing, impulse control, reasoning, working memory, emotional regulation, attention, motivation, all of those types of things have to do with executive functioning. And when there's breakdown with that, you're going to have a whole, um, you know, slew of issues that can occur from reading to attention, organization issues, and then all of these kind of um, umbrella, or I, I'm going to say all of these kind of diagnoses that can result. So when there's breakdown with auditory processing, we know there's learning and behavior issues. Now you're probably wondering, okay, but what do we do? What are factors that can contribute to it? So I'm going to be diving into this deeper as we go through in the next few weeks, but several factors can contribute to auditory processing issues. And this is what I want to drive home the most to parents is that this is not hopeless. This is not the end of the story. This is not that, you know, there's nothing else you can do about this. Things like multiple ear infections um, has been found to have a huge impact. And I'm not even going to say multiple because now the research is showing just one ear infection um, can affect or damage the cilia in the ear, those are tiny hairs in the ear. Those cilia can be healed. Okay, so that's not the end of the story. Things like heavy metal toxicity. We all know a lot of kids with learning and behavior issues are poor detoxifiers for various reasons, because they have blocked detox pathways, because they have genetic variations that can be circumvented with lifestyle and nutrition changes and so forth, um, you know, because of all kinds of factors, which I won't get into right now. Other factors are retained primitive reflexes, so also known as immature brain development. So basically these reflexes that should disappear in infancy are still there and then prevent your child from, you know, I'm going to say it doesn't prevent them from totally accessing their cortex, but it makes it much more difficult. They have to work a lot harder to access those higher brain levels. 
uh, left brain under development, the auditory cortex is on the left side of the brain. So a lot of our kids with learning difficulties have a right brain overdevelopment, hence their beautiful gifts, but they also tend to have a left brain weakness, meaning less connections that can be, in, that can be changed. Things like food sensitivities, gut health, all of that plays a role with auditory processing, the ear's ability to process sounds accurately and um, process those sound waves into electrical activity into the brain. So this is why you do not want to limit yourself to band-aid approaches, just relying on strategies, IEP accommodations, which all have a place, and why you want to go further. You want to address and correct the underlying root cause, which involves like basically a multi-therapy approach that addresses both the biochemical factors, what, what, I, what I call the biology of learning. So nutrition, gut healing, all of that, as well as improving the brain development through neurodevelopmental exercises and, um, you know, technologies and so forth. So that's what we do in the Full Potential Academy, but I don't want to talk about that today. I want to just give you a reminder, we do have a training, free training, February 23rd, the top causes and ways to address the root cause of auditory processing so your child has better memory, focus, and listening skills. So if you want to sign up for that, I'm going to post the link for that in the comments below, or you can just send me a DM and myself or my assistant will send you a link for that. And all, as always, if you do want to know about the Full Potential Academy, you can... Um, book a free clarity call to learn more about that and how to get enrolled. So thanks for watching everyone and have a fantastic day. Bye.